tornadoes have impacted northwestern Germany just in the past several hours. This is a little bit out of our area of coverage, but you can kind of see the evolution using last night's GFS model. Very fast moving system picks up this zone of 60s dew points. The surface low located right there. It is a fast moving frontal system. The storms got going pretty close to that and those tracked northeastward. The tornadoes occurred kind of in this area right there. Closer to home, not much going on. In fact, it is a tornado drought for storm chasers. An enhanced risk around the Philadelphia area, but the rest of it, slim pickings up and down that front from Michigan into southern Oklahoma and north Texas. And you can see the tornado potential is quite low. The storms will be a little bit more widespread for tomorrow, a little bit more forcing, so a very broad slight risk up and down the front. And then, once again, things shut down in the southern plains, slight risk up in Vermont. So if you want to go storm chasing, better get your hotel room booked in Burlington. In spite of that, we do have a very active weather pattern, a lot going on. We've got strong cold air advection through the western U.S., unusually cold temperatures in the Great Basin, and just as well, cold air in the northern plains. Precipitation has changed over to snow in Denver just in the past hour. As that front passed through Denver, Fort Collins, some wild temperature changes. This was last night, looking at the METAR reports. This is uh, going from the bottom to the top of the page with time. And you can see last night, that's going to be the report right there, 1Z. That's about 7 o'clock mountain time. Temperature was 84 degrees at Fort Collins, winds gusting out of the west. And then one hour later, temperature dropped to 54 84 to 54. That's a very significant change. And the winds came around to the northeast, gusting to 31 knots. And there's that surface map. Would you look at that across Denver all the way down towards the uh, Colorado Springs area snow and visibility is down to about half a mile west and south of Denver. Snow as well out in the mountains. I don't know if it's possible to get good skiing conditions this late in the season. And looking at the cameras around Denver, we're not getting any accumulation or anything like that, but it is wet and blustery and some very unusual weather for late May. Returning to that surface map, the tropical air mass covering a wide swath of the U.S. from Texas to the Great Lakes, all the way up to New York, up to Buffalo, and into the Lake Huron area. Where we have the deeper moisture coming north, 70s dew points, and haze. Now that could be recirculated smoke from the past few days of wildfires. Could be also wildfire smoke from Mexico, and Saharan dust. That's also a possibility. Just to show you what we're dealing with, let's run this back two days. Back to Wednesday. We had that fire in Silver City, New Mexico. Also, around the time we uploaded the video, there was a new fire that got going around Abilene. That's it right there. Looks almost like a little thunderstorm. And we'll just give you a closer look at that. After dark, you can see the spot of very hot temperatures on infrared but just before nighttime you can see the extent of all that smoke in the atmosphere that's a combination of the silver city fire which is going right there the las vegas santa fe fire all that polluting the atmosphere and resulting in widespread haze there it is the next day at sunset thursday can see all that haze in the air right there, especially on the Gulf Coast. And that brings us up to today. So there is some smoke out there, but we don't have the atmospheric optical depth products for today yet. Yeah, let's take a quick look. Atmospheric optical depth. 
I'm not sure if any of that's going to be in. Yeah, I'm starting to get some of it. That's going to be the westernmost extent. This has not been computed yet, but it looks like there is a lot of Saharan dust out there in the Caribbean, and that's going to be working its way into the Gulf Coast area for tomorrow. And we return one more time to that surface map. Dry line moving into the Texas Hill Country. I'm not sure the cap is weak enough to allow storms there. Cold front moving into Arizona through Prescott down towards Blythe and into the Los Angeles area. And then we take a look up there in the Pacific going up to Alaska. Looks about the same as it did Wednesday. Still looking at a stationary front across the Brooks Range. Temperatures still quite cold around Victoria Island, Northwest Territories. That's where that cold air has been locked in for the past few weeks. And that's helping to feed the flow of cold air infection into the central U.S. Coming back around into the Atlantic in Canada... A rainy day for parts of Quebec. Warm front heading into Montreal and Ottawa. So probably a period of warm weather for tomorrow. And then that cold front will catch up and put an end to the fair weather. And here's what we're talking about. Let's start out with the GFS and check out the forecast over the weekend. GFS very aggressive with those storms from Dallas towards Oklahoma City, Tulsa. Those move east-northeast overnight as an MCS into northwest Arkansas. And you can see that snow there in Colorado going at it big time around Trinidad. Colorado Springs, Pueblo, and back towards Goodland. For tomorrow, this is how it looks around midday, that cold polar high nosing into the panhandles. The front starting to advance on Dallas-Fort Worth, Abilene, and even into Albuquerque. That's a favorable setup for those canyon winds east of Albuquerque. The remainder of the front has not made, made much headway into Phoenix and the deserts. It's trying to overcome that very, very strong heating, and those fronts do not really make much progress this time of year. By evening, thunderstorms in East Texas all the way up towards Arkansas and into Paducah, Memphis. Some of those organizing into a brief-lived MCS. But most of it's gone by the next morning. The polar high nosing in for Sunday across all of Texas, all of Louisiana, and into Mississippi. So that's going to be about right here. And some of that cold air making it into the interior regions west of the Davis Mountains and west of El Paso. For Monday, nice day across many parts of the country. I'm not really too sure that front has made it through the southeastern U.S. There just was not really a very strong pressure rise. So I think that front is going to be running about like that. The western periphery like that. So Pretty similar to what we have today, except it advances further south on Monday through the south central U.S., not into the southeastern U.S., though. The return flow sets up for later Monday. Widespread storms across Texas. MCS, with that bare clinicity in place. Another round of storms for Tuesday. Stationary frontal boundary reinforced by that convection. I'm not exactly sure where that front is. I would probably go something like that with another segment up north. And it looks wet across Texas. Big MCS for Wednesday. Returning to a typical May pattern, I guess, in Texas. But still quite active across the western and central parts of the country. Let's take a look at that temperature records chart. Yep, looks like one more hot one, 104 for Abilene with the downslope flow ahead of that cold front, which is sinking south, 97 at College Station, and another separate area of hot weather in the Appalachians and east-central U.S. For tomorrow, it's good to see a return of record lows, and those are going to be 
from Denver all the way up into Montana. 28 at Denver for tomorrow morning, breaking the record by 3 degrees. Meanwhile, continued warm in Texas and Louisiana, and very warm in the eastern U.S. Temperatures 96 at Washington, D.C., 98 at Richmond, and looks like 93 at Albany. I need to dig back into that source code and find out what's going on here. So just ignore that for now. For Sunday, we finally break the heat wave. Approaching the record, 92 at Corpus Christi. Breaking the record at Worcester, Massachusetts with 95, but that's it. And a cold start to Sunday for Denver, Colorado Springs, and Cheyenne once again with lots of 20s. And how about that? Monday, no records anywhere. That's a return to seasonal normals. Same thing for Tuesday. Uh Uh-oh. Wednesday, here we go again. Heat sneaking into the San Joaquin Valley, 101. And for Thursday, warming up in the Great Basin area. It's not showing very much, but that's six days away. All of the forecast highs will reflect climatology to a certain extent. So I would keep an eye on this area for next week for the return of summer heat. And checking in on Big Rig Steve, he's on Interstate 71 in southwestern Ohio. He's heading from Columbus to Dallas. Kind of a long drive ahead of him, but skies are clear. Unfortunately, no weather to show you. And checking that out on the surface map. Deep southerly return flow, definitely in the tropical air mass, and 82 over 68. So there is the heat and the moisture. Then a quick look at the visible satellite imagery. Wow, we can really pick out that front. Shows up as that fine line cloud from north of St. Louis through Oklahoma City and down towards the Wichita Falls area. Looks like some storms trying to get going around Graham, maybe just west of there towards Throckmorton. There's a closer look at that convection bubbling, and it probably will take hold and start producing some towers in the next couple of hours around Wichita Falls, Bowie, Graham, and up towards the area west of Ardmore. We can see that's not really of much concern. The mesoscale floaters are not focused on Texas. So probably some garden variety severe weather. Out there in Colorado, we can see the upslope flow. There it is. Stratus and stratocumulus working from east to west. Very humid air up there. Climbing the terrain and cooling adiabatically and cooling to its dew point. Further south, the air is too dry for that kind of process. And aloft, you can also see mid and upper level flow working west to east. So a very dynamic weather pattern in Colorado this afternoon. And that's a look at things deeper into the Rockies around Utah, Wyoming, Colorado. And that's the look of widespread cold air advection, cumuliform clouds, very showery pattern, anywhere from Winnemucca, Salt Lake City, over to Cheyenne, Riverton, and Gillette. And if you go far enough to the north, you get into the snow showers. And they've got that going in Montana. That's a pretty impressive stream of cold air advection. Look at that there. That flow just coming right in from Alberta and Saskatchewan. And if we grab a quick model sounding, looks like about 20 to 30 knots, mostly around 10,000 feet. The upper level flow, not really all that strong. But let's talk thermodynamics. In the lowest 15,000 feet, a dry adiabatic lapse rate, very steep. A little bit of moisture, get those showers going, and you get those low top storms topping out maybe at about 15,000 feet. Above that, clear and blue. And elsewhere around the country, I don't think we have a whole lot else to look at. Little patch of storms around Philadelphia, 
Those look kind of disorganized at this time, but those are spreading into the Hudson River Valley and into the New York City area. So maybe some showers later this afternoon towards rush hour and this evening. And that's it for our Friday edition of Forecast Lab. Let me get this uploaded and out the door so you all can enjoy it. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care and we will see you Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. And if you're not a supporter, let me pop up that link at the top of the screen. That will get you set up for the private Monday videos. So definitely check that out. And of course, you also will be supporting the program. So I'll head on out and hope you have a great weekend. Bye-bye.